Previously on agentpalmer.com, finding future pirate treasure in the pages of debatable space. Six Nations Full Contact is sports documentary at its most candid and primal. And Kat from last episode has just announced Undead Folk, her next short, so go do all the things. This is The Palmer Files, episode 119 with Jess Eskra, a lawyer who's in the game to help people. We talk about lawyer myths, posture, legislation, jury duty, law school, debate, education, and much, much more. Are you ready? Let's do the show. Welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Sturchik, also known as Agent Palmer, and on this 119th episode is Jess Eskra. I met Jess through her husband, Rob Eskra, who was on this show twice during episode 94 to discuss hobbies, but most importantly to this episode, 58, where Rob and I talked about his going to law school, being a lawyer, and getting out of the game. Jess did not do that. Once she eventually got to law school, a story to come later in this episode, she found that she loved what she was doing, and she's still doing it. You discover just exactly what she does during this episode as well, or at least a portion of her job, because she does a lot. Anyway, you'll get to hear what she does and why she enjoys it, as well as debunking some of those TV courtroom myths A little about government, because that's where she works. Legislation, legalese, posture, anxiety, education, facilitating change, and well, all of that and a whole lot more is coming your way shortly. But first, remember that if you want to discuss this episode as you listen or afterwards, you can find all related ways to contact myself and my guest, Jess Eskra, in the show notes. Jess doesn't have a website, but you can be sure I'll pass along any messages to her if you wish. Don't forget, you can see all of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com. And of course, email can be sent to thepalmerviles at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's get into it. Jess, you are a lawyer. And I just want to know, like, the number one thing you want people out there to know that is the biggest myth about lawyering. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, first off, I, I hate to, to be a dream killer, but um, if you're a Suits fan, which I know a lot of people who admire the legal profession are, uh, they probably violate the rules of professional conduct and ethics about 17 times an episode. This is, so. this is like being like, I'm a fan of Scrubs, and now I want to get into medical. Yeah, but- like, just- it's nowhere near okay. reality. I hate to kill dreams, but yeah. But do they look? Do, but do people dress like that? Like, is the fashion oh, on point? God, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's all a lie. <laughs> it's all a lie. Okay. Um, I will tell you, they wear a lot of uh, probably like theory dresses. Um, so I work in the public sector. Um, a lot of government attorneys as well. We are nowhere near the same pay scale so you're getting a lot of macy's clearance suits you're getting a lot of um things that aren't tailored uh to you and it's nowhere near that glamorous and the shoes i have to say for women um there's no way you're going to be in court on your feet for five six seven eight hours in stilettos but okay so this has always been my question about that it's it's not the uh, the the comfort level. I I I that's a discussion for other people. But like some of those courtrooms have solid floors. Yes. Like at some point, isn't like the judge going to be like, can you can you can you stop tap dancing? Because yes. they don't they they do make noise. You're not. You've got marble, you've got hardwood. Yes, it definitely is not quiet. So you are actually mindful if you're a walker or a pacer. Um, I don't know. I get mindful about how many steps I'm taking um, because, yeah, it can get noisy and it can make you look a little bit, um, I think, antsy 
um, not calm, cool, collected, as you want to portray. Is it like, did you take any acting classes in, in school? And like, do you wish you had? I did not. I was a ballerina. So that might have helped a little bit with stage presence yeah. and posture and all of that. I did that for like 13 so years. Do you, okay. But st- before we move on, do you still have good posture? No, terrible. Oh. <laughs> we actually talk about that. We talked about that in law school. There's something called lawyer neck where you kind of, from hunching over and reading all the time, you get really poor posture. And if you look at some of the really seasoned older attorneys, they're like... <laughs> Just completely hunched back, and I'm terrified of that. <laughs> All right, but you have the posture because you, you've got some background in uh, uh, being center stage. Yep, and I get to carry babies all day, which helps, right? Oh, <laughs> when I'm not at work. Did Did you always want like you're the center of attention when you get up in a courtroom? Like, was that that's you're cool with that? Like, no, no. <laughs> I it's still nerve wracking. It never gets old. Um. You know, I, honest to God, I still, I don't litigate that often. So a lot of what I do in my role is um, case management. I prepare legislation. I do contracts. um, I give general legal advice. So it's really across the board. Um, We have a really small legal team that really just runs the the city from a legal aspect. Um, But when I do litigate, um, it is stressful. It's nerve wracking. Um, oftentimes I have, you know, the press may be present. So that's an added layer of stress or just residents, taxpayers may come, they're interested in the subject matter. Um, and so I still get the jitters. I get butterflies. I even, um, you know, uh, have a little bit of a a panic attack here or there. Nothing crazy, but I think that's the sign of a good whatever not even just like being in the courtroom like i still like i've done this show over a hundred times and i've done it with my parents and my best friends and strangers and i still get nervous like i i feel like when i don't get nervous before recording like like that's probably when it's time to hang it up like because honest to god so that's uh where i was gonna go next i i talked i confided in one of you know my mentor is an older attorney who had been around for decades and really respected him. And I said, you know, maybe this isn't for me. I'm like, I'm just a nervous wreck <laughs> all the time. And he said, oh, Jess, honey, that means you're so good. He said, when you stop getting nervous, when you don't care anymore, it's time to be done. Okay. And I was like, oh, my God, really? <laughs> I I mean the anxiety could go like I I like nerves getting ready for the record is fine but like I wish the just general generalized anxiety that I live with that can go away. Yeah. I don't think I need that to be good. That But do you find let me ask you because yeah. I I get anxious beforehand but once I'm in it I'm just in the moment oh, and Yeah, I-, I mean for for this yeah, what I mean there are there are times when it takes longer to mm-hmm. to like loosen up but yeah by by about now um it's gone whether it's the best or the worst and I'm yep. just in it and it it's kind of like um I presume go being in a rocket like I I was I still am fascinated with the old NASA um okay. so I presume you can be as nervous as you want when you're sitting going to the moon on the launch pad. But once liftoff happens, you, 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 you there's nothing, nothing to be nervous about, about anymore. You're you're, it. you're, it's all out of your control. And so, I mean, yeah, to a certain extent, we are having a conversation and either of us could twist it in any way. I guess we're both steering, but we're, we're on our way. Like there, there's, yeah. there's no turning back now. So I'd like, I, I feel like at this point it would have to be like looser or yeah. the nerves would be gone. I I think the my my level of anxiety beforehand has shrunk down. Like yeah. I used to be nervous for like hours before the recording and now it's just like the half hour where I'm like getting everything set up and getting everything ready. It's like, "Oh, oh, there it is again." 
there's right. there's that feeling. I know I know that feeling. Uh huh. Yeah. Definitely. Now, aside from you know that meaning you're prepared in in some way. Do, do you want to just not have to go into court ever? Like, would you rather just manage the, the paperwork and the caseloads and the writing? Or do you like being, do you like the diversity? Do you like being in the courtroom? Which, oh, by the way, I've served on jury duty, well, twice. Only once did it actually go to a trial. And like, even just being on the jury, like when you sit in that room, is it stressful? I've never known what that. Yeah, well, it's, tell me about that. It's so. It was weird because, and I I think generally speaking, most people it depends on the trial. Uh, for me though, the the few times I've been sele- not selected, like it just feels like a weight of like, oh, this is responsibility. Like, because yeah. everybody's like, do your civic duty. And it's like, yeah, but can somebody else do it? Like, I don't know if I, wa- I don't know if I'm ready for this level of responsibility, but when you get chosen, like there's a different, like it, it feels like you're back at school and yet not prepared because you're oh, no. like, like the, the one thing and, and the case that I was on, it was around the holidays um, and I'm pretty sure that like we went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, uh, there was a recess and then they settled sometime over the weekend and like oh. Christmas was like Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, the next week, Christmas was the next week. So it ended up being that they, they, they pushed it and then they settled. So oh. we didn't get to, we didn't make a decision, um, and it was a malpractice case and it was a, a whole thing, but like sitting there, like in the jury box, you're like, it's, it's everything about school. I hated oh, no. um, because you don't, you only get one opportunity. Like, I, I mean, technically a you can lawyer will be a good teacher though. And they'll give you what you need. Yeah. But you know what, you know, you know what, that, that might be true. Um, but I, 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 I may have fixated on the wrong things because it was medical. So like they were trying to, they, they were trying to talk about like, they were trying to make analogies and metaphors. They did not want to get into the science. Like, and yeah. it was both sides. No, no, <laughs> nobody wanted to get into like the true science. Like the, we, we had one like three hours of testimony from a doctor about the actual science and the rest of it felt like metaphors of like, and it's just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I, you know, there was, it was a diverse group. It felt like a diverse jury. Like I was, this was a a while ago. So I was 24. I was one of the younger people on it. Um, But it just, it felt, like a responsibility I didn't sign up for. Yeah. But like, well, you didn't. I, well, I <laughs> you didn't, <were> but, <laughs> but like, it was just like, Oh man, what's going on. And yeah, it, it, I know like sitting there, they're giving you all the facts, but like yeah. consuming all the facts and making sure you take it in. And it's just, it's one of those things where like when, when I, when I think back on like the OJ trial and like the bigger, like high value jury things, I'm like, I don't env- like, I, I think those people are saints like, holy crap. That's yeah. amazing. And I, it amazes me how many people I'm surrounded by that have never been even like, not even not chosen, just have never oh, been yeah. drafted for selection. I have to tell you, I've never had a good conversation with someone on a jury so it's a fascinating perspective well but i don't there's 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 none of the people that were on my jury wanted to be there for various reasons and i think a lot of, mm-hmm. mo, most of it was timing right like everybody's like i'm trying to get prepared for 
the holiday break, whether they oh, were professionals or this, that, got in the way. you know, yeah. and it was just like, Oh no, this is, this is ruining my plans. Me. I was kind of pissed. Cause like I was working retail at the time and that's when I make my money. Like yeah. it was like, what you're not, you're not going to pay me. So there's, and, and the entire jury kind of commiserated on like, well, this is shit like that. It's shit that we're here. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, it feels like when, when I, when I see things happen where it's like, this is a case without a jury, I'm like, well, why did they need me for like, just, <laughs> like, can't we just do that all the time? Yes. I don't know. So have you ever, you've been on jury selection? I have not. Okay. So I guess a little bit of background in my legal world, what I kind of do. So uh, when I came out of law school, I originally did um, family law. So I worked with a nonprofit organization that provided uh, free legal defense, uh, legal representation to survivors of domestic violence. Okay. So that put me in family court. I did a lot of custody work, divorce work. So a lot of litigation experience. I was in court quite frequently. Um, but those are all bench trials because they're in family court. So just a judge is deciding those cases. Okay. Um, now in my work uh, with the city, so I represent the municipality and a whole host of um, litigation type matters. Um, the cases I've been in court directly on were largely tax related. Okay. Um, also some interesting stuff about uh, interpretation of the city's charter, filling a mayoral vacancy, which was a whole crazy <laughs> debacle. Um, those go before a judge or a panel of judges. Um, they're also bench trials. I also help manage the defense of cases in federal court and just general civil matters in state court as well. Um, but those are typically covered through insurance. So we're appointed insurance defense counsel. Okay. I'm still very hands-on in those cases, but I am not the one trying them. Um, I will help mediate them uh, where possible to try to settle, to spare folks like you, um, <laughs> Agent Palmer from jury duty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you've, you've kind of been all over and it sounds like generally out of law school, you've done like helping and you're not what the cliche would be of like the ambulance chaser or anything like no, that. No, I like to say that I took the most expensive degree possible and found a way to make the least amount of money doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's, so I do that's like fair. public service. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I work for, for the city now it's my only position i don't have a private practice um i yeah complete and that's how a lot of lawyers what a lot of lawyers do there's legal aid um there's uh government work and complete antithesis to sort of the you mentioned ambulance yeah. chasers do, do, but yeah do, do you do you want to like write laws do you want to be a mayor do you want to be a rep like because outside of and i don't maybe maybe i'm a little naive when it comes to this and i probably am but like outside of majoring in political science being a lawyer is a stepping stone to service not not all the time but it's a common stepping stone so like do, do you see yourself like with an ambition to be like, yeah, of course I want to run for mayor or district attorney or state representative. Like, is that like, d d it's not why I set out on this path. This path <laughs> kind of happened to me, which is super bizarre. I know most people go out with this intent. Um, for me, it was just kind of the way my career evolved. Okay. Um, but, uh, I, I don't see myself right now running for anything. Um, and I do, you mentioned making laws. I'm not a legislator, but I do write all the city ordinances. So that is cool. I get to craft. Okay. And so it's a different hat, right? When you're in the courtroom, it's more 
defense, right? You're defending something you've done. That's typically the the space we find ourselves in, in the litigation realm and drafting ordinances, creating laws. Um, it's a much more prospective mindset. You're sort of problem solving into the future. If I write it this way, how, what will happen in this situation or how does it apply to this hypothetical? So it is a whole different aspect to the law, but it's fascinating. Does it, me. does it permeate the rest of your life? Like do you, there are, are there moments when like you come home from writing something and thinking about how far in advance something might impact things and you go like, Oh, well, if I, if I do this in the house, like in five years, we won't be able to move that couch again or just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do, do you think, long term about other things like is it yeah there's definitely more of a, a an analysis of cause and effect i think okay. what are the unintended consequences of something um i i would say i'm definitely more of a worrier so they tell you when you go to law school um the whole purpose of it is to change the way that you think okay and it's totally true Everyone I graduated with from law school, every lawyer I know says absolutely, full stop, no question. Uh, you see those potential problems, potential areas of liability uh, kind of just permeate everyday life. It's crazy. I, I, I have a friend who's in insurance who now also sees the world in 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 that kind of a way where it's like, he, he, we walked into a building and he's like, uh, yeah, I wonder what the liability is on that thing right there. And I'm like, you just cl don't, don't look at it. Like you're off the <laughs> clock. Chill out, buddy. You're not, yeah. you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not writing them a policy. Like chill. It's cool. Right. But I, like, I, I understand it. It can't be <laughs> easy. You can't turn it off. Nope. It's just on. It's running, running in the background at all times. Now you're helping people. You got out of law school and you chose a path to help people. So I guess I would ask wh why, why law school? Like, was that always, was it always the goal to, to get a law degree and help people or early on? I always wanted to go to law school. Um, my mom from, she, she always says when I was really young, I was always obsessed with fairness, right? Like okay. what was fair? Were people being treated well? I'd pick up for the kid who was getting, I stick up for the kid who was getting picked on. Like, I gotcha. Um, and then I, I took a, a government and law course in high school and I really liked it. So I love the teacher. So I started in the mock trial club. I really love that. So then when I went to, I went to Temple University for my undergrad, poli sci, and again, just gravitated towards, um, I, I had a specialty concentration in philosophy. Like I loved debating. I loved uh, arguing in the abstract. Um, my, my parents would probably tell you I still do that to a fault. I still, I, I'm not, I didn't take a philosophy course. I think I may have taken one philosophy course as an undergrad, but I love all of that. Like yeah. I, I will debate in the abstract to no end. I will mm -hmm. even fight to the abstract in no end. And I, I, I'm, I'm cool with it. Like it's just, yeah. it, there's a, I feel like there's a part of me that likes debate better than I do like writing or creating something because it's a live puzzle that yeah. because I'm talking to you and debating you, it's always changing. Like I can know you pretty well and still not know that you're going to like pull out some random thing that I just right. didn't expect or like, you know, who knows what direction you're going to go. And it's like, Oh, I, you know, in that regard, it's like a boxing match. It's like, well, if you don't dodge, if you don't have a comeback, you're done. Right. But you have to think on your feet and you got to talk it out. And outside of the law and the courtroom, like you, you, you and I, you could you could let me talk myself into circles. I might actually talk my way out of it. Like I might talk myself into a good point. 
Um, right. It, I, it's true with law, too. Law okay. is just using a specific set of rules and procedures, right? There's your rules of the courtroom, your civil procedure, and the laws. It's just, imagine, it's the same concept. It's just you've got two specific rule books. Okay. And you, you start law school, which mm-hmm. is not a guarantee to a finish of law school. <laughs> Right. So like, well, I actually took time off and after undergrad, I started um, working in a law firm because I was like, I don't, I just don't know yet. Um, I ended up working there for four years and I was doing a lot of the lifting by the end of my time there. I was like, you know what? I should just go. Okay. I'm, I'm there anyways. I might as well just try it. I, I, um, I know this is a dangerous question, but like, had you not spent four years quoting quote, you know, I guess trying before you buy. Yeah. Do you think you still would have gone to law school? No idea. Okay. Probably. I, I don't know. I don't know if I would have been called back to it. It was something that I was always interested in, but had I gone down a different path, if I had gotten comfortable and, really set up i i don't know if i would have made that leap it's it because it's i i finished halfway through i i want to say like sophomore junior year of my undergrad i was convinced that it would be fun to stay in school forever (laughs) by the time i graduated i was like i'm never going back to school ever again um and I don't, I don't know. Like something changed in that little bit. Yeah. I, I was like, I, I grew out of it. I was done with it. I don't know. But like, I was like, I'm not. I, can't, I, can't. I was right on the cusp. I had been out for about four years. So it was like, I need, it was do or die time. Like I was either going to set myself up doing, staying on the track I was on, or it was time to just go all in and take that leap. And I, Happened to come across, I, we had a client at the time who happened to be an LSAT tutor. And so um, he gave me some free tutoring. I took the LSATs. I did really well. Um, applied and got a scholarship to law school, which is really rare, right? Um, so I just went for it. So you you get out. You're helping people. Are, are you living the, I mean, ignoring the money, because I know that that's a whole different kind of a stratosphere and you can take different zigs and zags if mm-hmm. money was more of a priority than helping people, but you're helping people. Um, You know, in Rob's episode, Rob talks about like calling up one of his old professors after about like two and a half years and being like, I don't like this. And he's like... Yeah this is not uncommon. Like there's, there's always not, not for everybody, but some people get to that moment and go that ah, this isn't for me. Did, did you even have that moment? Like, or was it just like I, from the moment go, I'm helping people. I'm cool. This is great. I'm, I'm into this. And then never looked back. I would say, um, I've not really ever had buyer's remorse. I, I, do enjoy thoroughly what I do some aspects of it more than others. But I would say there's definitely moments where the work is hard. Um, It's not glamorous and you kind of go, maybe I should have picked an easier path. Like this is, (laughs) this is tough. There's, there's heartbreak, there's ups and downs. Um, It's not always as gratifying as you would want it to be. Are you good at compartmentalizing that though? Yes and no. Okay. Um, there's there's part of me that pines for the private practice days, right? Where you pick up a file, you work on it, you push it as hard as you can, you do well for your client, and then you get to put it down, right? Yeah. And move on to the next file. And this is different. So I'm a general legal counsel internally for the government. Um it's all mine all the time. There's no end. There's always There's something no new. And right. And so that's tough. Um, and, and you become personally invested in the work then. Um, and so there's, there's moments of heartbreak. There's moments of struggle. But, but unlike putting the file down, 
where you might get a break in between files, even for a yeah. little bit, you, you don't get that now uh-uh. you're on the, and I, while this is nowhere near similar, uh, this podcast doesn't have seasons. I'm on, I'm, I'm on the grind until whenever I drop basically. Yeah. Um, and I, I, every time people ask about starting a show, I'm like, do seasons. Like, don't be me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be able to like have a start and a stopping point and then choose to start again. Oh God. Yeah. I look at Rob who has, his life is organized in semesters, right? Cause he's yeah. in academia. He's in the college world. And I'm like, oh, God, that sounds so nice. Like you got a fresh start in September, no matter what happens, you get a blank slate. It's, um, and I have cases closed. I'll have certain matters, you know, come to a conclusion, but like I said, and we have legislative calendars, right? So that has a cycle to it, but there's always contracts. There's always legal advice. Um, so I give legal advice. I, I only have a staff of four full-time attorneys. Okay. Um, it's myself. And then I have three full-time assistants, um, but we give legal ed. So our staff is about 500 or so employees. That's not a good, that's, that's a, what's it's a bad ratio. Yeah, I was right? going to say um, that's, that's for doing all the legislation, the litigation, the contracts, the legal advice, and it's the entire fire department. It's the entire police department. It is the entire public works department. It's all of the city hall staff. It's anything from tax issues to uh, search and seizure law to property disputes, code enforcement. Um, so it is a wide arena that we kind of have to cover. So I know that there is like the League of Cities and like the Convention of Mayors or whatever they're called. Uh, like I know there are these kind of things. Is there like a, I don't know, a, a support group for other people in your position around the country where like you can talk to people that are in municipalities yeah. bigger than you and smaller than you or like do you, I know of none. I know in Pennsylvania they were trying to have, and that's the other thing, right? So you may have some universal issues that are across the board, but when you're looking at municipal law, it is very much state specific and it is very much tailored to your category or classification of municipality based on size. Yep. And and I, I have to ask this question. Municipalities change size all the time. So how much you can change classification. It's more difficult than not to do that. So it's pretty rare. Okay. Um, So you don't have have to worry about everything you've just been doing changing because like it wouldn't happen on a dime. No, (laughs) it would not happen on a dime. It would, it would, you, you'd see that train coming, but you know, it is fascinating. So the city that, I represent in Pennsylvania is the only city of its size, the only one that's classified as a two A city. Okay, so we are an island unto ourselves, um, and we're governed by our own home rule charter, which makes it even more um, specifically tailored. So we don't necessarily have to follow that code. We, we follow our own charter that was adopted by the residents, um, by referendum, by and through a commission. Now, so it's like we have our own sort of little constitution book unto ourselves. That, so at the beginning of this, I asked you about myths about lawyers. Yeah. But you have to, in your position, hear myths about governance like all the time, right? Like there has to be people that come up and go, well, you work for the city, right? Like you can just fix this for me. Oh, but, sure. Yeah. That, it, do you wish that that would stop? Do you like it? Like how much do you wish we could just pause everything and educate people better? Oh yeah. Um, a lot of people, I, I always find that, somewhat alarming and disconcerting. Uh, I think I think there are a lot of people who are really dedicated and knowledgeable um, and kudos to them. 
really appreciate them. Then there's, I think, a fair portion of the population that doesn't understand the law, but is nonetheless very opinionated. Um, (laughs) They don't understand the government or the way things work. um, But yet still, and I get that, right? Like, I don't want to understand the code or the ordinance. I just want you to fix my problem. That's the level of local government that we are at. And I absolutely get that, you know, that, and that's what our job is, is there for. I will tell you, I dealt with some really complex legal issues. I litigated, um, I was in a hearing for eight and a half hours this week, but I still had emails with this woman who was really bothered by the storage pod next to her house that wasn't in the right spot and nobody would listen to her. And because she saw me at this hearing, she found my email and she sent me pictures and she was just like, I just want somebody to help me. And I got it fixed for her before Friday. So that's why you do what you do. Right. And she doesn't want to lecture on this ordinance or the state statute or why, you know, I, it's just, She just wants you to fix her problem. And if you can find a way to do that, kudos to you. I I mean, I I think a lot of people are in that boat. I would also say a lot of people are in the other boat where it's like, I saw this on an episode of SVU. (laughs) Or like just the, the proliferation of law shows that people are using yeah, as- there's a real basic misunderstanding i think of some really general concepts in law and in government so kind of switching gears i did teach a course um at one of our local colleges um for a semester i taught political sociology i had third and fourth year students So I had designed this beautiful class. They were going to make their own governments and it was going to be great. And um, we were going to do some comparative aspects, look at other countries, other structures of, you know, democracy and other forms of government. I walked in and I could not get one student on the first day to name the three branches of government for me. I know, I know. My, you just did exactly what I like, did. Here's it, the, I don't cons- like. I don't. I I think I'm smart. I don't think I'm a genius. But like, I don't know how that's not. How how could people not know that? I don't know. By the way, I I was just gonna. It's it, it, it's it's executive, judicial, and legislative. Like they're, they're they're like just just for anybody who's like, well, he's just saying that. Like, no, I mean, I, I know what it is, but I think I knew what it was in seventh grade. I don't. Yeah. I, I yeah, there are moments where I am concerned. Okay. About the state of this country and where we're going because of education. But doesn't this make you want to? you know, take that step up and, you know, uh, uh, be, be the mayor or the state representative or the, the governor, you know what I mean? Like, doesn't it Yeah. Th- like it's got a balance that you also know how the sausage is made. So like you, you're, you're not coming in as like, well, I'm just going to get elected and change things. Like you understand what it takes to change them, but like, you right. still have to kind of want to like, I I do want I do want to help facilitate change. I know in my small way when I get platforms because I do speak sometimes at city council meetings or in larger professional settings. Um, try to really explain things in a basic way. My goal is to educate people. So you mentioned earlier about the jury and not understanding and it being more of an opinion based. Um, yeah. bantering then i i think a good lawyer educates right yeah. you're not supposed to know every aspect of the law you're not supposed to know the facts or the story of each case but let me explain it all to you in a palatable way so it's not intimidating i don't ever want people to feel dumbed down or stupid or you know it, 
this is tough stuff. Every case is difficult. Running a government is difficult. So being able to explain it in a way that's palatable, that's digestible, I think separates the good attorneys from those that are really subpar. Yeah. I And I, I think the other thing is not, not all lawyers. It's that TV mentality of like, no, no, no. Like, you, 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 because I think, I think in the average television courtroom drama, there's a, an objection and an overrule like every 30 mm-hmm. seconds or something like that. Yeah. And I was on the, <laughs> I sat there for four days. I think there might have been one objection, right? Like, yeah. just it, it, the, the, the pace of things and the real back and forth is very different. Yeah. Um, I, I did, do you, th- do you think, that uh you you change and i'll make this personal so it's not just general but like do you think you change when you know like it's an open door session and the press shows up or you you look in the in the gallery and there's like 15 citizens as opposed to just like an empty bench like does it change the way whatever you prepared you know does it change your your performance so to speak um, yeah, I, I would say so. Um, cause I'm not just trying to then convince a judge or if I'm even at a city council meeting, like convince council to vote my way on something. Um, it is a, it is an educational platform. It's a chance to explain. I think a lot of people get disheartened by government cause they don't understand what's going on. Yeah. And so if I can help you understand and take you along this journey with me, um, win, lose, or draw, it's still a win in a sense that, like, at least there's an educated populace, to your point, that we were kind of talking about earlier. Yeah. I I, I mean, do I don't want-, want anybody to ever feel like, oh, I have no idea what she just said. I'm dumb. I should just check out, right? Like if I see eyes glaze over, I've lost you and I'm not doing my job because my client isn't just this amorphous entity. It's not just government for the sake of government. It's people, right? Yeah. That's it. Do, do you want to get into education then at some point? I, I taught a class and I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> I, it's, it's so I funny. don't know. Like, I mean, look, I, I, we, we've been talking in generalizations because it's safer for the both of us, but like, I can only imagine that you've needed a lot of patience in some of your research and your writing. True. And like, I, 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 I don't want to be mean, but like when I was in college, I rewrote a set of bylaws. Okay. Uh-huh. And I was in, co- I didn't know anything. I mean, that's why you go to college to learn things. Right. Um, and I could read the quote unquote legalese that these things were written in and I could write it. Yeah. I'd never want to do it again. I've done it once. That's, that's enough for me. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, people look at those documents and they go, none of this, none of this shit makes sense. What, what are you, what are you talking about? And it's like, I, I get some of the issues as when we talk about like constitutional issues because things are written in a not not plain English, but they but they also are written in English. Like you can understand what it is, and I think it's just they're unnecessarily they're using outdated. Yeah, that's the yeah. So actually, a couple of things pretty cool. Um, contract law has now. The newer school of thought is to move away from that. Oh, nice. There's no wherefores. There's no here and afters. There's none of that. Um, A good, solid contract is going to be plain English, black and white. You can't hide behind it. And the average person can understand it. And I'm a big proponent of that. Um, I actually have a book that I made all my assistants read about that. That So don't give me any more of that outdated crap. Nice. Um, I also, uh, so we do legislation and that is stylistically a lot of that old school and 
I am, I do appreciate the history of it all. Um, but we've started, um, over the last few years, we do cover sheets now that go with every piece of legislation and it is pretty basic who, what, when, where, why, how much, okay. and anybody, and that's public record. It's on the website. It's posted to the agenda. So anybody that picks that up should be able to understand what's going on. Um, and I think they're just, those are some of the little things, but I think it's a big deal. I think it's important, right? Oh, I think it would make a huge difference. I, I, I mean, I, I stay away from a lot of it, but like you can't avoid the internet and like talking heads talking about law in some respect. And if you turn on two channels, you're going to hear two opinions and that's not necessarily because of the law itself, but most of the arguments are by and far <laughs> unrelated to what's written on the page. Right. And I, I, I don't think a cover sheet's going to solve it as far as the, the media goes, but I think as right. far as the people in the middle, the people that are getting, you know, that aren't on the extreme left or the extreme right of things, they will be able to pick up this cover sheet and go, Oh, so generally it helps me. Yeah, I'm willing to spend a little pages. money. Either I love it or I hate it. And yeah. I'm going to be able to suss that out pretty quick yeah. in five minutes. And you know, it's, I'm not going to win everybody over with everything that I try to accomplish, but at least they know. Do, do you think generally speaking, we're headed in a direction where like, you know, laws will start to kind of devolve into plain English and we're going to get rid of the, the whereas and the, you know, I don't know because I, I don't, at least in my state, I feel like there's a lot of outdated stuff that on the books that should be cleaned up and it just isn't, it just lingers because politically we don't want to touch it. Right. Well, um, yeah. I mean, the, also it, it's one of those things that unless you can come up with a way <laughs> to make it a voting issue, which becomes an issue for me as an intelligent person. Cause I'm like, well, not everything's a voting issue. Uh, right. you, you're not going to get elected on cleaning up the books, but someday down the road, somebody's going to be very happy that they picked up this book and could read it. Like, yeah. And I think, um, we're also legislating things to death. Things have gotten so complex. Like I know we've expanded the law department, um, where I work because, there are so many rules. It's it's hard for a lay person to understand what's what's allowable, what's not, what the process is. Um, especially like you look at. So we do have have some federal funding. Oh my god! The, to just contract and to understand when you can do certain things, when you can't. Like it's it's a lot to unpack. Um, and I think unnecessarily so at times, I, I, I'm just happy that someone in your position thinks this as well, because like there, there's, there are plenty of people I could have sat down across from that would have been like, well, that's the way it is. You got to go to law school to understand it. And that okay, those are the lawyers that are making lots and lots of money <laughs> okay. by the hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I want the simple expedited, like. Is there a reason for this? Can I do it? Can I not? How do I tell my client? Yeah, I mean, we should. You, you and I should start like a small consulting business where it's like somebody, <laughs> somebody, somebody is like, this is what it. This is my contract of five hundred pages, and you know, you're like, explain it to my aunt, and it's like, yeah. well, in five hundred words, I've summed up this five hundred pages. Clearly, we don't need these five hundred pages anymore. We've just saved ourselves all this time yes and a lot of money from private attorneys who bill by the hour uh-huh <laughs>It's not a political statement to say that people get disheartened by government because they don't understand what's going on. But I believe that Jess has explained to me that there is some good stuff happening at local levels that is worth noting and more than that, worth perpetuating up to regional, state, and national government. Jess wants to facilitate change. 
I believe she already is. Making sure that text of legislation is simpler and more straightforward. Cover sheets that make laws and legislation more approachable and understandable one cover sheet at a time. These are not necessarily groundbreaking ideas, but they are not only simple to do, they are in practice now. We could all use more good government. And if someone like Jess is willing to take the most expensive degree possible and make the least amount of money with it, all for the sake of public service, we should hope that there are more like her out there. And I believe there are. And they're fighting an uphill battle because, as we discussed, not everything is a hot-button issue. Not everything will have pundits and talking heads debating on the screen of your choosing day in and day out. And if you would just shut out those voices, you may just hear or see Jess making roads better and making lives better for the fellow members of her own community, one small issue at a time. Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, episode 119. And now, for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you're still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. In the show notes, you can find more information and ways to contact myself where you want, and I can pass along any messages to Jess, who's fairly offline. The music for this episode was provided by Heno Heiter. Email can be sent to this show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com. And remember, your home for all things Agent Palmer is agentpalmer.com. All right, Jess, do you have one final question for me? I do, Agent Palmer. So my question for you would be, based on our conversation, do you feel that you have a positive outlook on lawyers, a negative one, or are you neutral? Oh, man, that's a tough question. I mean, I th- I think that your citizens are in good hands. I have a, I have a positive outlook on you. <laughs> um, I... I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, generally speaking, I have a positive outlook on lawyers because most of the lawyers I've run into socially are similar to you where they're just trying to help. Um, but then again, I don't know any of those private attorneys that are billing by the hour and making a lot of money. Uh, and even the one time I needed a private lawyer, it was uh, unfortunately more and more like that long contract bullshit where like I probably could have done it myself had it been written in English. Um, right. But I, I don't have a, ne- I, I, I want to have a positive view on it. I think if I never turned my TV on again, I would have a nothing but positive, like, uh, you know, idea of lawyers i but i think the problem ends up being that i turn on the tv and there's a talking head that's not a congressman and it's not a representative and it's not a mayor or a senator and it's just like lawyer (laughs) like just like economist i hate economist i that that one drives me nuts too just general like lawyer who's just like talking and it's like you're so fill- the talking head lawyers. Yeah, I'm I'm done with the talking head lawyers. And honestly, I I'm I'm not a big fan of like I didn't watch suits. Um I wasn't the biggest fan of like any of the law and orders. Um I I remember a ton of stuff from the West Wing because that was one of my favorite shows. But, Love the West. Isn't that the idealistic world of like lawyers and government? Well, and- it is because you, you you had a scenario where there were episodes where the left and the right would have breakfast together and fix something. 
as opposed to just yelling in the press, which is what we have. What we have. I, for the record, I am no uh, Babish. That is my role, but I do not have the same. Uh... <laughs> All right, but but what was the uh, John Larroquette? Do you have a cricket back cricket uh, bat from? Because uh, John Larroquette played the 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 chief guy before Babish. And, right, and right, he had right. a cricket bat. Do you have a cricket bat? I do not. You should get. We should get. Somebody should get you a cricket bat because my just... son does want to play cricket. Yeah. actually, yeah. Get. So we should get it, you a cricket. Maybe in the cards. Yeah, I'm just saying that would be baller. <laughs> like that would be great. But uh, also on the Wednesday night NBC lineup of that era was my favorite law show of all time. What's that? Ed. I didn't see that one. No, nobody has. I, it's just like me and like four people. But Ed was the no. bowling alley lawyer, and it was all Ed. Ed it was like three, se- four seasons, three, se- four seasons. I think it was four seasons, and Ed, um, like it's the most cliche late nineties, um, or early two thousands like thing. Like he literally is a a lawyer in a big city law. This is the pilot I'm describing. Okay. He's a lawyer in a big city law firm. And he makes one mistake on a 500 page contract, but it's like where the comma is. So oh, he, he loses. The, comma? What? An Oxford comma. No, no, no. This is like a comma in like numbers. Like oh. it's like a hundred thousand instead of 10,000 or something like that. And so he gets oh. fired, finds out his, his wife is sleeping with the mailman. And then he goes home and ends up buying the old bowling alley in his hometown and starting a law practice, a small town law practice. Oh in it. And that has been my favorite because it's, it's kind of like, um, uh, uh, like some of the other like country, like city lawyer goes to country movies yeah. that we've seen. And it's kind of like that, but I, it's, the thing about that show specifically, which is why I like it more than any of the others, is because when it comes to the law, it's generally just him trying to help yeah. people. I don't, honestly, he did fairly well as an independent, and nobody ever really talks about how he makes money because he's always taking like pro bono or like he's just the good, <laughs> he's just the cliche good lawyer who's like, yeah. wait, so you just need to turn your electricity on, you know, like, and he just gets right. a notepad out and starts writing. Like, that's. That's what I want all lawyers to. I just, I I want them to do it for the good of, do like I I know law school is expensive, yeah. But I want them to do it for the sake of doing something good. Yep. And and not that, yeah. It's funny you said that. So I have like a little bulletin board in my office, and I just won like a potentially like multi million dollar pension case. But the thing that's on my bulletin board right now is the thank you letter from the lady. Cause I moved the storage pod in front of her house. That was blocking her parking spot. Yeah. It, it, like, so I, I'm all about the ad. I, I, I will yeah, have I'm, to check I, it out. I'm going to have to send you some links. It's, Definitely. It's, it's, and it's wholesome. That's the other thing too. Like the, the, the no, law that shit feels good. It does. I it just th- makes you feel good. And the law doesn't need to be flash. Like, I think we've spent too much time in front of the TV. <laughs> like we've, we've, espe- we've officially established that the law is, um, a unreadable and unknowable and B it's sexy and flashy and dangerous. And it really is. It's words on the page. It's no more dangerous than any other book. Like it, 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 sh- or it shouldn't be. And I just, I started this out by debunking suits. I told you that none of that's real. Yeah, this is, <laughs> so we came full circle. <laughs> we went all the way around the horn. 